Yuri saw what had happened. Fortunately, their backs were turned towards him. Here was Yuri's chance to attack the enemy. He's not armed, though, but today, Yuri had lost a lot of confidence in himself. He felt he hadn't done anything right all day. Fighting wasn't his expertise, so there really wasn't anything he could have done. But he was disappointed in himself for not being able to help just to see him. But in that moment, he was the only one who could do anything. If possible, he wanted to go get Katsai or Akasaki. They were both very reliable. They could take out this man in an instant. <laughs> uh, Katsai showing up with a shock and alone would be like, Okay, I surrender. I'm not going to pick a fight with you. But there was no time for that. Only in this moment was his back facing near him. And you know, if it was Akasai, Akasai would only one punch and he'd be down. And if Yuri didn't do anything, the dog was sure to take Xion hostage, creating a deadlock. Enemy backup could arrive at any moment, so being in a deadlock would mean death. Therefore, Yuri couldn't depend on anyone else. He had to resolve the situation himself. He only had one chance. Once the unit member turned around, the deadlock would begin. He has all this time to think about this. Seriously, it makes no sense. But was there even a way for Yuri to knock him down in one shot? No, he had to. He must. There had to be something that only Yuri could do. Yuri took a mechanical pencil out of his pocket. It was probably the strongest weapon he had. <laughs> Yuri stabbed the man's neck with his mechanical pencil, but it only scratched him a little. Yeah, but that's still gonna freaking hurt. What was he thinking? The man drew his gun and pressed it to Shion's head and created a stalemate just as Yuri predicted. Sorry, I was only thinking about Sosuku. Shion's eyes were filled with tears. Okay, Director, could you please tell your friends to get rid of their weapons? You know about that huge sound before one of you who has a pretty big gun. I don't want to get shot with that. Come on, Yuri, remember Kasai signed from earlier. You can do it! <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Do you really think you can deal with me? Here, in this basement of the Erie Institute. What? Don't assume this is a regular mechanical pencil. It's actually a syringe that Tarkness Sand developed. Do you want to know what was in it? <laughs> Do I need to explain? What? Oh shit. If a regular person had said that, it wouldn't have worked. I guess it's... he's pulling a bluff though, isn't he? But Iria was wearing his white coats and the basement was his territory. What he just said sounded very believable. He wanted to believe that Iria was lying, but he started feeling an inch, itch on the back of his neck. H-178 is a drug dark no sand created. It's a masterpiece of the 170 O series. There's no treatment and symptoms such as confusion, delusion, head headaches, runny nose, stuffy nose, constipation and many other things will start within a few minutes. In the end, you will scratch your butt so hard you'll bleed to death. <laughs> the only cure is to take the antidote within one minute. That's a lie, Osara! Hmm, 30 seconds have passed. It's going through your heart by now and soon it'll be everywhere in your body. Don't your lymph nodes itch yet? You snore off fart when you sleep. <laughs> Shun could only watch this pathetic act in silence. But for the man who Zarko worked at such a shady research center, what Irie said sounded totally believable. It's completely stupid the way he's one on a body though, isn't it? Shit. Okay, I give up. Hurry up and give me the shot. Mm, is that the correct way to ask someone to do something for you? Okay, I give up, sir. Please give me the shot. No, that's not good enough. That's not how you talk to your master. I'll tell you one more time. Are you ready? I have to inject you in the butt. Get on your hands and knees with your pants down. After that, stick your butt up by it. Put your shoulders on the floor. Bite your right thumbnail and turn around. There you go. Shake your butt and beg me to give you the antidote. What, you can't do that? That's sad. Ever since ancient times, maids vowed completely, completely to the masters. Their selfless devotion has created the virtues and culture we enjoy today. Look what is happening to that wonderful Japan nowadays. Youngsters have forgotten the spirit of maids. Tanned their skin, started wearing loose socks and flashy Hawaiian fashion. Oh, what happened to uh, Japanese women of the good old days? Careful luck. Yeah, do excessive tanning and take care of your skin to keep it smooth. Socks must be knee high, of course. Pagoda belts are wonderful too. But once in a while, blah blah, God, he's going on. 
The big Jim Hart has forgotten all about his whistle. Whoever is happy, your friend again needs to learn both right. Then the age society will result in that. The middle age population continues to grow. And God, he's still going on. Middle age women, you know what? I'm not even going to bother. He's just going on a freaking rant. Jesus Christ, man. This is like one of the she's passionate speeches. The King of Maids, Neil, takes back the sound from the king. Got the magic words! Are you okay, Shianta? Jesus Christ. Do I even dare try to read all that? <laughs> I'm not even going to read it out loud because that's just too much shit. Maybe I will. But not in his voice because, my god, trying to make, like, do an intense voice as he's ranting on, that's just too much. Says so a child, take care of your skin to keep it smooth. Sucks to be neat. I, of course, we can't have so wonderful too. But once in a while, I suck to rock it too. And cultivate the spirit of a maid. Seriously, he is obsessed with maids for some reason. Can I think? The friends have forgotten all about it. Whoever you say, I'll spend it again. The maids to lower birth rate and age society are a result of that. The late population continues to grow, and it's only a matter of time before more media starts targeting that audience. Up until now, all the women's series were treated as a niche in pawn shops. Eventually, they'll occupy a huge quarter. Middle aged women and maids are just like different kinds of toilet detergent. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Middle-aged women and maids are just like different guys. I, I mean, how old is uh, Yuri? Like, he gets to middle age, you know, he tries to, you know, uh, you know, find a woman around his age, middle age, and he's like, oh yeah, you're the guy who said that middle-aged women are like toilet detergents. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> They're dangerous to mix. If you mix them together, then you get housekeepers, not maids. And housekeepers will be in a series of videos people watch. That'll be the extinction of maids. That time comes, the moon will shatter into a sad rain upon the world. And an asteroid belt will cover the earth. This is the judgment day prophesied in Revelations. When the great maid headbands cover the entire world, the true king of maids will revive. <laughs> You're, you're insane. <laughs> what the fuck was that? It's like, are you okay, Shion? It's like, are you okay, Yuri? What the fuck was that? Yes, thank you. Coach? Acts like a sign of Kase, you're the guy. But I'm not finished teaching him about mates yet. You can continue later, Doctor. I mean... Seriously, what the fuck was that? <laughs> that was ridiculous. So she could. There really was nobody left to stop her. She ran down the hallway at full speed. It was right there. There was a huge window in front of she that allowed her to look inside. She threw herself at the window. And then it smashed. <laughs> so she was there lying on the bed. He was sleeping with an IV connected to his arm. There were some wires attached to his forehead and chest to observe his brain waves. The waves of light displayed on a machine they connected to proved that he was at least still alive. But he might be sleeping very deeply. His face was pale and he looked like there was barely any life left in him. He is alive, right? Sushkin's alive, isn't he? Calm down, Dr. Yuri, hurry. Yuri brought in a stretcher to a low stoshi on to. As I opened it up. Hurry, put Stoshikun on it. Shion-san. Before we take him out of here, there's one thing I want you to promise me. Here I give Shion a condition. What is he saying now, Shion angrily thought. I'm going to move him onto the stretcher, but don't try to wake him up. Do you understand? I want you to promise me. Why? Why can't I wake him up? That was the first thing Shion wanted to do. She wanted to tell him personally that he was free, but Aria was telling her that she couldn't do that. 
I know it's hard. I'm going to tell you the truth quickly. Sashikun suffered severe, a serious emotional damage on that day. Fortunately, he's alive, but he can't tell his friends from his enemies, or truth from fiction. He's suffering from a serious delusion of persecution and fear. To escape from that, he would attack anyone. In fact, one of the clinic staff was seriously injured last year, so much that she had to go through facial reconstruction surgery. He would even attack you. She unfinally noticed it. As though she was covered in a blanket on the bed, there were two belts over that blanket, holding him down on the bed. And that he also had leather straps around his arms, strained to the bed. You know, it really is a good thing you didn't bring a stoker along because, you know, she would uh, freak out a bit, wouldn't she? <laughs> a bit would be an understatement properly there. It was a strange bed. The belts had some marks on them. But is he ever going to get better? Silence that followed was cruel. Iria wanted to tell her that he would be cured, but he was a doctor. He knew he shouldn't say anything irresponsible. And so that's why he couldn't say anything. What, what is it? What the heck is it? Are you saying Satoshi Kun will never s say anything anymore? You'll never rub my head ever again. Why? Why? She uncried as she panned on the glass. Stop, if you really care about him, please don't wake him up. That's what he wants to. If you wake him up, he will likely hurt you. He doesn't want you to see him like that either. So please, try to understand. Why? Not gonna voice that bit because it's just like, no, just like, uh, whatever. It's like trying to do the crying thing, you know. Especially for a female character, it makes it's a, it's a bit it's a bit odd for me to try to try to even attempt to do that seriously. I completely ruined the mood by pointing that out. I should have just left it silently without pointing out that I was the reason why I didn't voice it. She slid down the window and hit the ground of the floor, crying uncontrollably. She scratched at the floor of the side reunion and her anger made her claw at the dials. If Satoshi's smile was there under the floor, she would scratch her and tell all of her nails were gone. But Satoshi wasn't under the floor, he was right there. He was sleeping on the bed, and he wasn't supposed to be woken up. But there is some good news too. It was a very small chance. I mean change, but his brain waves have improved just a little in the past year. Human bodies are strong. Same can be said about their brains. There have been cases of people who received fatal injuries to their brain, yet recovered completely. Sashikun is trying very hard to come back. He's continuing to fight. I won't give up either. I'm doing my best to bring Sashikun back to our side. And I will bring Sashikun back to enemy's hour. The brain is what moves people, but the brain is only a part of a body. If something happens to the brain, the person will end up changing. That's why, you know, uh, brain injuries are very serious. That change, change hurts the person himself as well as the people around him. And it now hurts that person even more. I mean, did the, I mean, the, it kind of like enhances the paranoia, but did, does it actually lead to permanent damage there? I mean, he's able to reverse the effects of it on uh, Sudoku and hell. In one arc, Keichi was even able to bring uh, Renna down from L5 stage of that. So it does seem like it's possible to be reversed. But in Stoch's case, it's uh, it's a very long-term kind of thing to you know, cure that. And it always hurts that person even more. Here he recalled his parents, the abnormal change in his father. His mother was not able to understand that it was caused by a brain disorder. That was enough. That was sad enough. That was the reason why Iria became a neurologist. Right now, there was a young boy before him, and a young girl. Before him was a fragment of the sadness from that day. A fragment of that day's regret. After his father's death, Iria learned that he was misunderstood, and that it was due to a brain disorder. But it was all too late by then. He regretted not getting into the study of brains five years earlier, but it was too late. I mean, not that it was, I mean, not, not from personal, I mean, but... Not that it really made much of a difference, because that was around the time when lobotomies were a thing, and those weren't good at all. 
is this <laughs> Who would have thought it's like, okay, let's like, let's poke the brain, like stab at it, that'll fix it. And now he had studied and experienced so much, he had achieved things and he had confidence. But he still had regrets about that day. Here he holds his fist tightly and spoke without hiding his tears. I promise. I bet my life on it. I'll bring Sir Shakun back to enemy's hour. I promise you. Sir Shakun is trying to come back. If we reach out to each other, it will happen. Shion san. Please trust me and wait. I promise you. I will bring him back to enemy's hour. Here he vowed this from the bottom of his heart. And he realized something. Here he realized that everything he had done was in preparation for the stay. Two people in front of him went his parents, but he was going to rid himself of his regrets and devote himself to that promise. It's like he wasn't able to, you know, resolve the issue with his father, but he will try to, you know, do so with uh, Satoshi. Really? Are you sure? Is Satoshi Kun coming back? Really? Yes, he is. I bet my life on it. He's coming back to his hour. So she answered. Please wait until that day, and we'll welcome him back together. Do you think you can wait until that day comes? Can you keep this a secret from Sinoka-chan? Yes, Satoshi-kun is coming back. I'll do anything. I'll endure anything. Please, look over there. Ah, there was something in the corner of that dark room. It was the giant teddy bear that Satoshi had brought that day. Bought that day. Well, it's nice to know that he really didn't, you know, be like, I'm gonna throw that away. <laughs> no, he keeps it with Satoshi. He worked so hard and saved a lot of money to buy that for Sadoka chans birthday. Can you imagine Satoshi Kun leaving without giving it to Sadoka chan No, you can't, can you? Satoshi Kun will come back to you and Sadoka chan with that teddy bear. Please, just wait until that day comes. Can I come visit him, though? Of course. Can I sit next to him and read a book to him? And, and... Absolutely. I'm sure you'd like that, too. She unstarted the cry again. Aksaka came in with Tomotake, but he couldn't say anything to her. She's like, oh yeah, this was the main reason we're here, but you know, Satoshi, yeah. I'm glad you're safe. Once you call the bloodhounds, everything will be okay. Well, it won't be that easy. That gunfight earlier destroyed the radio equipment in the security room. Mount Dogs must have cut off all the communication to lead out of the village. So any way to get in touch with Tokyo would be to leave. If that's the case, we'll have to break through in a car. Me and Son and the others are doing a great job gaining some, ah, gaining some time for us. But it will be cornered eventually. We have to take Tom and Taka San out of the village so he can call the Bloodhounds. We have a problem. If they've already cut the phone lines, they must have closed down the road to, uh, uh, the road to town too. We're also supposed to carry one high explosive anti-tank weapon in case the vehicle tries to break through. An RPG-7 They aren't expecting a tank, so I guess they will be using high explosives. Even if they don't hit us directly, they might flip the car. They're not easy to deal with. Unless we use the highway, it would take too much time. We can't take any detours. They're all doing great, but I don't think they'll last until sunset. We have to hurry. We don't have any time to waste, huh? We've got to take Mr. Tomataki to Okinawa immediately. Coach, head to a safe place for Stoshiku. Let's get out of here quickly. It's only a matter of time before they show up. Shion's eyes were swollen from crying, but she had calmed down. So she's safety depended on their victory. They had to win for his sake, too. Although this is a very sad situation, Stoshi was alive, and he would be back someday. Shion understood that, but yet more tears poured from her eyes. Sis, everyone, thank you. We've succeeded over here. Sokner didn't have enough stamina to walk around in the mountains. She was running out of breath. But even so, she continued to scream at the mountain dogs on the radio. She wasn't using an intercom like the mountain dogs were. Instead, she was using the communication unit on the back of one of the dogs. So he constantly had to listen to her yelling. Wait, on the back of one of them? 
What, is she on piggyback ride through the... No, that can't be the case. Surely not. If it is, then that's gotta be an hilarious visual. <laughs> not for the uh, mountain dog, though. It's like, ow, this really hurts. Both in more ways than one. It's like having to carry you around is painful enough, but you're screaming into my ear. <laughs> Damn, everyone is so useless. How can they call themselves a special unit? Whatever happened to the famous mountain dogs, huh? I can have bitter lower lip and squeeze her left arm with her nails. Rams had nail marks all over them. She was holding her grandfather's research scrapbook in her left hand. Even Tarkner didn't even know why she was holding it. Maybe she grabbed it unconsciously because she wanted her grandfather to comfort her. The mountain dogs had already suffered devastating damage. They had to walk around in an area they weren't familiar with. And they wasted their energy on the multitude of traps that had been set. Although they were as tough as can be, they are getting exhausted. Shit, does the Major even know any commands other than attack? Huh. <sighs> <sighs> and you're one, and I'm you're thirty. Watch out, your left wing's down. You're next. You gotta be kidding me. Why me, damn it? He panicked. The same thing kept happening. His team members had been going down one at a time, starting from the left flank. And he was next. Did that mean the enemy was going from his nine o'clock? No, those demons didn't think normally. On this mountain, being aware of 360 degrees around yourself wasn't enough. Even being cautious of the ground below your feet and sky above your head wasn't enough. Where are they fucking coming from? I don't think it says that in Japanese. Like the, uh, they don't have the F word, obviously. Those bastards come here, come here, come the fuck at me, you know what? I will check nonetheless, though. It would be hilarious if they actually did drop an F-bomb, but I doubt it. Yeah, I'm not seeing the F. I've seen a lot of this character, what does that mean? <laughs> but whatever it is, it isn't the F-word. If they actually use the F-words, they are using Kusar again. I mean, that's as close as you're gonna get there. But if they did have the F word, it'd be written out in Karakana. It's not like you can't use the F word in Japanese. It's just that it's not an actual Japanese word. I get 13 held his taser in front of him as he looked around timidly. This taser could have been a powerful weapon, but it was far more effectively used indoors. On this mountain, it was almost worthless. You know? The way they kind of like write that now and get 13 hellless taser in front of him as he looked around timidly. It's like with this sound effect and the black ink screen, it's like, oh, he's in a he's in a horror movie or something now. <laughs> you just picture it being pitch black, but now it's still the middle of the day. Then Gale 13 heard a noise behind him from a bush. He thought he saw something, so he fired his taser. Electrodes flew out into the bush. Did he just imagine it? He felt a tug on his taser. The cord from the taser was stuck in the bush and he couldn't rewind it. If it wasn't useless before, it had certainly become that way. Then he heard a noise behind him again and this time he saw someone coming at him. But his weapon was useless. The newcomer growled at him. What? Damn you! This is all it took, because he was so scared he didn't think that was exactly what Stoker expected. Stoker was up in the tree, dropped a metal bucket on his head. It landed perfectly. Maybe it turns into carry now. <laughs> no, obviously not. Well, what the heck? What is this? The bucket had some drawings on it. What were they? They were drawings of strange unknown creatures. They somehow resemble those strange characters you see on educational TV programs. Aren't they just so cute? Take it home with you. As Retta jumped out from another bush, she hit the bucket with a stick. No, maybe it should be described as a strike instead of a hit. The man flew backwards. Keiichi was ready for him. The stance he was in looked a bit like... That's it? He looked like a batter in a batter's box. He was on one foot, that was the legendary one foot swing created by that one world famous baseball player. Destructive force can't be measured from just one direction. 
as a function of both speeds added together. With kids to strike and speed of his opponents created a truly amazing destructive power. I mean, wouldn't that kill him potentially? <laughs> Whoa, a home run bunch! What with an exhilarating and magnificent sound. Our dog flew into the air in the opposite direction. Then he rolled down on the ground and stopped where Rico awaited him. It was almost as though they calculated that he would end up there. <laughs> uh, poor thing, poor thing. Pat, pat, meep, meep. What are you, freaking road runner? Rico patted the bucket happily. This comforting moment for Nightingale 13 only lasted for a second. Meon shuddered, taser at his butt. Nightingale 13 jerked for a moment then went limp. I mean, this is just pure torture at this point. <laughs> you actually feel bad for the guy. <laughs> no one down, it's time up. Keiichi and Renner jumped on him and tied his hands behind his back with wire. Oh wow, well, that was great, what a, what a team we are. Oh, that was perfect. We shall do combination 7 next. Oh wow, well, I want to do 5 again. Oh, you liked that one, did you? You might have a hidden town for using traps on your side. And you and Stoko high fived. Mark Kitchen ran a tight nine girl 13 up. Rico tried to send something in the air. Meet me, 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 me. There's that pesky coyote. Bing! I feel something coming towards us from that direction. Meep me, meep. There are two. And they're both very scared. Neep. Ha ha! I don't know how I do that voice, but I do the neep by my neep. Ha ha! My voice goes really weirdly high pitched. Rico reported to me on. She was a bit like a radar. The meep, meep, meep signal. Mion didn't even care about the guy they had just knocked out. She was already trying to figure out the next move while looking at Stoker's map and using the info Rika gave them. Gave her. Everyone eagerly awaited Mion's next order. <laughs> Why are you looking at me that way? You haven't had enough fun yet. Yeah, I guess we're just getting warmed up, huh? Shall we continue? Let's get them all. Next time. <laughs> it's like, oh, what a cliffhanger. It's been an hour, 50 minutes, let's get a word a day. I mean, this, this arc is going on for freaking ages, isn't it? Um, what could be the word of the day? I don't know. <laughs> That being here, I doubt it. Oh wait, no. We've already seen what trap looks like in Japanese in this very record session. It's in katakana, so it makes no difference. It's trap. Um. You know what? Ensoku. Ensoku. Outing trip. They're gone for a trip in the hills. How lovely. Well, I'll do for this, right? I, know, I might as well save on screen, why not? So, this long ass arc continues. But, you know, surely it's gotta be reaching its uh, end soon. <laughs> and then the next record session goes on this long, and it's like, bloody hell, it's still going? But yeah, it's not surprising that the final arc in the series, the main series, I guess, is so ridiculously long. I'm not complaining now, it's, uh, you know, it's it's kind of entertaining. It's interesting seeing, uh, like, this final showdown against the Mounted Dogs in Takano. Anyways, I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.